I like to think of myself as a fairly positive, cheerful, optimistic person. But when I read things about the cost of regulatory failure, it makes me feel pretty miserable. And yesterday, we saw the independent review into the failures of the Financial Conduct Authority from Dame Elizabeth Gloucester. She's looking at how the FCA treated investors and treated the regulation and supervision of London Capital and Finance. And this led to huge, huge investor losses. And it has a knock-on effect. It has a knock-on effect uh, not only on regulated businesses like mine, but also on the cost of advice, the cost of financial services products and investment products. So in this video, I'd like to talk about regulatory failure. I'd like to talk about the cost of this regulatory failure and what you need to know when it comes to how UK financial services is really regulated. I'm Martin Bamford. I'm a chartered financial planner and informed choice. And on this channel, I make videos about personal finance, investing, and happiness. Not much happiness, I'm sorry to say, in today's video, but some very important findings regardless. If you would like to become part of our subscriber community here on YouTube, it just takes a second, press that little red subscribe button. and It's completely free and it means you won't miss out on any future videos. So we're talking about the cost of failed financial services regulation here in the UK. And to put this in context, as a regulated business, our business informed choice pays an annual levy to something called the Financial Services Compensation Scheme. Now, the Financial Services Compensation Scheme, the FSCS, is a safety net. It's in place to compensate investors in failed financial services firms here in the UK, and it is a good thing. It's essential for the confidence in the UK financial services market that we have this safety net in place. But it is expensive, and that cost burden goes up and up and up each year. We crunched some numbers recently and over the past decade, we've paid out, and keep in mind we are a relatively small family owned business, we've paid out more than half a million pounds, 500,000 pounds in annual and interim levies towards the Financial Services Compensation Scheme. And these levies fund the cost of compensation for the customers of other businesses, failed businesses, not successful, profitable businesses like our own, but businesses which have done things wrong and failed subsequently. And the FSCS then compensates these customers. And we see multiple examples of these business failures each year falling into the terms of the FSCS and then the FSCS coming after us for money to pay for those compensation fees. And a recent example, a very high profile example, was a business called London Capital and Finance. This was a business that was promoting unregulated mini bond products. So lend them some money effectively and they'll pay you quite an attractive looking return. They were promoting these mini bonds all over social media. They are offering returns of 8%, which if you know anything about investing money and the link between risk and reward, you'll be very aware that's a red flag in itself. You don't get a low risk product that gives you an 8% return in the current economic environment. But they were offering these and the FCA, the Financial Conduct Authority, did not do enough to supervise and regulate this particular business, London Capital and Finance. And as a result, investors lost out on an awful lot of money. In fact, investors lost out on around £237 million of their investments. This affected more than 11,600 customers of London Capital and Finance. The sad thing is here, many of those customers were first-time investors, some of them losing tens of thousands of pounds each. And the business, London Capital and Finance, was going directly to the market. So it wasn't working through advisors like us. It was targeting investors who wanted to make their own decisions. And they were not aware that actually an 8% return in an ISA, mini bond ISA, was a red flag. It was something to be very aware of, very conscious of. So an independent investigation has now taken place and we have the findings of that investigation into how the FCA regulated London Capital and Finance. The investigation was chaired by a former Court of Appeals judge, Dame Elizabeth Gloucester, so we're calling it the Gloucester Report. And it is fairly damning, I have to say, about the actions or the inaction of the Financial Conduct Authority during this time in relation to London Capital and Finance. Dame Gloucester concluded that the FCA failed to effectively supervise and regulate this failed mini bond firm. She said that the failure to regulate effectively was the result of significant gaps and weaknesses in the practices and policies of the Financial Conduct Authority. And she singled out the chief executive of the Financial Conduct Authority as one of the people responsible for these regulatory failures. That was Andrew Bailey, a name you'll probably recognise. Andrew Bailey is now governor of the Bank of England. The report said 
Responsibility for the failure in respect of the FCA's approach to its perimeter rests with the Executive Committee and Mr Bailey. Now, perimeter is a regulatory term. It means what falls under the scope of their regulation. And in terms of London Capital and Finance, the business itself was authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. But some of the products it was selling, these failed mini bonds, were not regulated. They were non-regulated products. And therefore, there appears to have been some confusion about what was regulated and what was not. And many investors looking at regulated by the FCA, stamped on London Capital and Finance, maybe felt that was an air of credibility uh, attached to the business and therefore what they were investing in was suitable, was was well protected. Not the case. And I said this the other day as well in terms of cryptocurrency because the FCA is now regulating anti-money laundering and counter-terrorist financing when it comes to cryptocurrency firms. I worry that that term registered with the FCA will lend an air of credibility to cryptocurrency as it did with London Capital and Finance. But this was an issue. This was an issue of flawed regulation and one hand not talking to the other hand, I guess, because the FCA not really understanding where its responsibilities started and where they ended. So turning to Andrew Bailey's role in this failed regulation, he um, acknowledged the report in a statement. He said, as CEO of the FCA between 2016 and 2020, I apologise to LCNF bondholders. When I was asked to lead the FCA in July 2016, it was clear that a substantial reform programme to the supervision of many of its 60,000 firms was essential. We took immediate steps to change the approach. The required changes in culture, mindset and systems was a major programme of work across the organisation which took some time to put into effect. I'm sorry those changes did not come in time for LC and F bondholders. It, it's it's a response to uh, an accusation that his leadership at the time was ineffective and led to the failure of regulation in LCNF but it probably doesn't offer much solace to investors who lost, as I said, in many cases, tens of thousands of pounds in these failed mini bonds. Something else identified in the report were the number of highly suspicious transactions between a small group of connected people. Um, investors, as a result, losing most or all, in some cases, of their money. Now, I think we were all quite aware that there were these interconnected transactions taking place in the days following the failure of London Capital and Finance, but it's good to see it in black and white in the Gloucester report, confirming for LCNF bondholders just how bad this situation was and how the people behind LCNF were allowed to do things that no regulated firm should be allowed to do. It's worth mentioning that London Capital and Finance was being widely discussed within the independent financial advisor community at the time because we were seeing adverts on social media uh, promoting these unregulated mini bonds, offering these high rates of return for an apparently safe or guaranteed products. And several IFAs I know flagged up these issues to the regulator, to the Financial Conduct Authority, who sadly did not take the appropriate action at the appropriate time. So there were warning signs here. This was an obvious car crash happening in slow motion, yet the FCA did not act quickly enough or act effectively enough to stop losses for investors. And therefore, it's very likely many of these losses will now fall back into the financial services compensation scheme. Now, as an investor, as a user of regulated financial services advice or products in the UK, you should be concerned about this. You should be worried that ineffective regulation is leading to higher compensation costs because effectively the cost of that compensation, while we pay it through our fees, our regulated fees each year, our levies, that cost, those costs, are going to be passed on to our customers. And it's the same for fund providers, it's the same for banks, it's the same for insurance companies. If we have an ineffective regulator in the UK, and that results in higher compensation costs, as it has done, then those costs do get passed on. Now, here in the UK, we reached a really sad tipping point a few years ago, where the cost of compensating clients in failed firms started to exceed the cost of regulation. So we pay more to the financial services compensation scheme each year than we do to pay for the running of the Financial Conduct Authority. Now, something is wrong with that. That is symptomatic of broken regulation. And I worry there's no incentive here to get better at doing this. I worry that the FCA won't clean up their act simply because there's no incentive. It's other people's money in both cases. 
Now, there are some talks here about bonuses not being paid. I've never really understood why people in a public body or in the lines receive bonuses anyway. Surely that's a private sector activity, not something where it's funded by other regulated businesses. But bonuses apparently won't be paid, and there are calls for some existing bonuses paid to people at the helm at the time of this issue to be repaid too. Maybe that will wake them up a little bit. Maybe that will incentivize them to do better in the future. But I genuinely worry that it won't. One campaign group acting on behalf of London Capital and Finance bondholders referred to this as gross regulatory failure by the FCA. And I think that is sufficiently strong language to describe what took place here. And sadly, I don't believe it's an isolated example. I think we see multiple examples of this where the FCA could have stepped in sooner and taken more robust action to protect the interests of investors and to prevent there from being a call on the compensation fund in the first place. Responding to the report, FCA chairman Charles Randall said, we accept all the recommendations that have been made to the FCA and we are profoundly sorry for the mistakes we have made. The collapse of LCF has had a devastating effect on many investors and we will do everything we can to conclude our investigations as quickly as possible and support the recovery of further funds for investors. Only time will tell. We will have to wait and see what happens next. We wait and see whether this is genuinely a wake-up call for the regulator, if they will clean up their acts, if they will change their ways, and if they will act in a more responsible fashion towards the money being charged to uh, customers, clients of regulated businesses like ours, like banks, like insurance companies, like fund providers. Because as I said earlier, the money is coming from you, the end customer, and then it's paying for regulation, and it's paying a much higher cost now for compensation to customers of failed firms. I hope you found that interesting and insightful, a bit of a look at some of the findings of the Gloucester investigation into regulatory failure when it came to London Capital and Finance. If you got caught up in the London Capital and Finance saga, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about the findings of the Gloucester report. Until next time, I'm Martin Bamford, and when it comes to your money, the more you know, the faster it can grow.